Hey guys, it's Travis with BPNorthwest.com. Got a phone call the other day from a guy who was looking to replace his uh, alternator on his MGB. Uh, he said he was looking for a high performance unit and uh, we'd asked him how many, how many amps were you hoping to uh, churn out with this and he said at least 200. That's a lot of amps, that's a, a lot of power. So we had asked him what he was running in his car beyond stock uh, that would require him to generate that much power. And he had upgraded the stereo and a couple of other small things, but really nothing that, uh, that would require that kind of amperage. So we decided to put a little video together to talk to you about your electrical system, tell you how many amps that you're going to need for your car, and then we could show you how to replace the alternator. The first thing you have to think about is these cars were designed to run on anywhere between 25 and 29 amps. That's it from the factory. So if you upgraded the stereo, uh, added a, a high performance electronic igni ignition, uh, something like that, it's really not going to change how many amps that you need, um, especially to negate a 200 amp alternator. Think of it like this. Everybody's house has a breaker panel in it. And it's a series of different uh, amp breakers that will let you control how much power can go to each room. But the big important one is your main breaker. That's the one that says how many amps can be drawn throughout the entire house before the electrical system shuts off. Now, my main breaker is 200 amps. So, think of all the things that happen in your house at the same time during a day dryer, washer, TVs, radios, you name it, and all those things are running and you never blow the main breaker. So the question is this. If your home never uses 200 amps, why do you need to generate 200 amps for your little British car? So let's go ahead and change our alternator out. First thing you're going to need, obviously, is your new alternator. Now, these alternators that we sell, uh, this is our high-performance version of an alternator, and it puts out 43 amps, which is more than enough, uh, regardless of what you're running on your car. Uh, since we're here, we may as well change the belt. Uh, take a look at your belt, bend it a little bit. If you start seeing some cracking on the belt, probably a good idea to replace it. Now, you'll notice on my old belt, on my car, you'll see that these ridges here are on the outside. Um, and the new belt, the ridges are on the inside. And the easiest way to tell which way they need to go is these belts are actually tapered. And uh, the smaller end goes in on the inside. So that's how you can tell which way is which. You're going to need a couple of box inch wrenches, half inch, and then uh, you're going to need uh, something to pry with. And I like to use a chunk of wood. Uh, and the reason is, is because wood has give to it. So if you get a hold of something, uh, the wood is going to give long before anything under the hood of your car. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you always want to do when working on anything electrical is take off the positive side terminal on your battery. Now that the battery is disconnected, the next thing you're going to want to do is grab your box in wrenches. There's a bolt on the top and one on the bottom. And you're going to loosen both of these up so we can get this alternator pushed in a little bit so we can take our belt off. Go ahead and take your belt off, and you gotta get it around the fan there. And you can take a look at it. Take a look at the inside and see if it's starting to crack. My belt's still in pretty good shape. There aren't a lot of cracks and whatnot in it, so I can reuse it. Here's a belt here that's kind of wearing out. You can see that there's some cracks in it, it's splitting, and on the outside, it's starting to split as well. Now there's a couple of shims down here on the bottom. 
and make sure that they don't fall out or you don't lose them. Now if you're lucky, like I am, and the last guy put the bolt in backwards, you're going to have a little extra work today. Because you pull the bolt out and it hits the radiator. When you guys start pulling your car apart, it's extremely important to pay attention on how exactly everything goes together and make sure something as insignificant as putting in a bolt doesn't seem like a big deal, especially when the radiator is off, but it's a big deal somewhere down the road. So we have to take loose our radiator, make a little bit of room so we can pull this bolt out of here. Okay, the bolt goes that way. Okay, now that we got that out, wiggle your plug loose right here on the back and take that off. The last thing is, if your alternator doesn't just slide right out, it's no big deal. There's a couple of collars in here that you may have to help wiggle loose. Get your flathead, get right up here toward the front, and you can wiggle that a little bit and that bushing will come right out. Then, just pull your alternator out. Now your new alternator goes in just the opposite way of how the old one came out. Now, you may have to get a hammer and hit this bushing to push it in just a little bit so everything is nice and tight. Or you can just put your bolt in that way. <laughs> put your bolt in and when you start tightening everything down it'll pull that bushing in exactly to where it needs to be. All right, now that the uh, bottom bolt is on, go ahead and take your plug, push it right in there, and then you have this cap that's going to help snap and secure it into place. Then, take your alternator, roll it up to how it's going to end, then take your bolt and just go ahead and sit it right into place into that top nut housing there. Now go ahead and throw your new belt on. Now one thing to remember is if you decided to put a new belt on instead of the old one, your new belt may be a little bit tighter than the old one and that's normal because these things stretch out. Now once you get your belt on, go ahead and pull it tight and then just finger tighten that bolt right there. The next thing you want to do is grab your chunk of wood, put it right down next to that engine block, and just lightly, you don't have to crush it, just put some pressure on it, then you can go ahead and tighten up that top bolt. Pull your board out, go ahead and double check and make sure your bottom nut is nice and secure. Now, remember, if you had to take apart your radiator to get a bolt out, don't forget to put that back in place as well. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks again for watching. As always, if you run into any snags along the way, give us a call at 503-864-2001. And if there are any projects that you're working on that you'd like to see us get down on film, drop us an email at howto at bpnorthwest.com. Thanks again for watching. Enjoy the ride. Hey!